world. This is Laharam Pestis, and we have started another Tasty Thursday. You see a whole array of stuff here in front of you, and it continues further down the counter there. I don't have any name for what it is that I'm making for you today, but it starts with something that is called compound butter. Compound butter is really simple. What you do is you measure some seasonings out, you put them into the butter, you mix the butter and the seasonings together, and then you let it re-solidify in the refrigerator and uh, you have compound butter. It's pretty simple. It's really simple and it tastes absolutely amazing. You have not had a grilled cheese sandwich until you have had a grilled cheese sandwich with compound butter. Today I broke out my scale for you so that I can give you more accurate measurements. Um, I'm going to start with uh, one teaspoon of granulated onion for this and this one teaspoon is going to come out to just one second three grams or one teaspoon of granulated onion and I'm going to put it into the bowl I'm going to replace my piece of paper there make sure it tears and it did all right and now I'm going to measure out the same amount of garlic powder as in one teaspoon and we'll find out how much it weighs here in just a moment that looks like that's going to come to about four grams of garlic powder it gets added to the bowl now I'm going to measure out one half of a teaspoon of oregano one half of a teaspoon is not detectable by my scale <laughs> so I can't provide you metric users a um, can unit there and I apologize um, let's just say one gram. How's that? And I'm going to add that to the bowl. Now I have some pepper, ground black pepper, and I am going to measure a half a teaspoon of it as well. That comes out to one gram. And finally I am going to use um, a special salt, um, Hawaiian black rock salt. And I am just going to uh, measure this directly onto the paper. I'm going to go for about one gram. Now the butter that I am using is unsalted butter, which is why I'm adding salt to the butter. And I'm using one stick of the butter. And let's go ahead and add this to our bowl there. And I am going to turn off the scale and move it to the side. And now I'm just going to mix our dry ingredients together. Now the reason that I am using such a heavy onion to garlic ratio here for this is because this butter is later going to be going on to garlic bread which I'm going to be making as well for this dish. So I add to this and then I just mix with my fingers. Okay butter is now mixed and we grab our sheet of wax paper and bring it over here and now we're going to transfer the butter to the wax paper and I'm just going to scoop it right into the middle of it like that. I should probably tell you why I use my hands. It's because my fingers will soften the butter while I'm working with it and I can make sure I massage out all of the little chunks and all of the everything and get all of the ingredients incorporated with one another. Thank you Lahar. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Oh, she's getting me a paper towel ready too. Yeah, I know how this goes. <laughs> now that just goes in the fridge, right? After I roll it up, yeah, because it's got to be a roll. It has to be a roll? Mm -hmm. Okay. Since I can't make it a stick again. Yeah. Oh, I could if <laughs> I made it. You could if you butter. tried. All right, and welcome back. So I've got the butter there, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently coax it into a cylinder. Now the smaller the cylinder or the smaller the diameter of the cylinder the um, quicker it is going to re solidify inside of the refrigerator which is what we want so all of the flavors that are in there can like start doing nasty things with each other and incorporate their flavors and all of that stuff. So, while this is not going to be a perfect cylinder, it is rolled, and this is ready to go into the fridge. Alright, 
getting set up for the next part. Alright, so the next step is vegetables. I am going to be peeling and chopping a lot of vegetables. And through the magic of television, you don't have to sit through it all. And here we have the knife and the zucchini. Uh, more to come later. Alright, and uh, welcome back. And I have it chopped up. And now I am going to be adding this to my measuring cup over here to get you a weight and an amount by volume. We are looking at 547 grams of zucchini, which comes to about four and one half cups. And now we have a yellow squash, and through the magic of television, you don't have to sit and watch it get all chopped up. Yes. And we're back, and take a look, it is all chopped up. Yellow squash comes to 376 grams, and it looks like it's about three and a quarter, three and a half cups. Alright, white onion. And, and we're back. Here is your uh, onion chopped up, and now I'm going to weigh it for you. Okay, I used one half of a white onion. And there is, so, um, this is, because I forgot to uh, tear the scale before putting the um, onion in, uh, we need to do a little bit of math. Now, what we're going to do for this, it's an easy fix, is um, we're going to subtract this reading, or subtract that reading from this reading. So, 1,218 minus 1,041. And uh, while she's doing that, we'll see if the geologist can math. <laughs> this is going to be about one and a half cups of white onion. 177 grams. 177 grams of chopped white onion. Does that sound right? Sure. Okay, we can sure. Just if you're wrong, everybody in the world will eventually see it. That's what's frightening me. So, 177 grams, one and a half cups of chopped white onions, and we'll be back with the next vegetable. Four bell peppers, one of each color, just to add some brightness to the dish. And, okay, so we're going to interrupt your regularly scheduled break from my voice and my hands to show you how I take care of a bell pepper. Now, um, I have already cut the stem off. As you can see, these other ones still have their stems. And now what I do is I take the bell pepper and I turn it over on its head. And now I just start here and slice in and then slice down. And I clipped a couple of seeds that time, but you'll notice that I don't have anything to clean and they're all still there. And I'm just going to rotate it about 90 degrees. Wow, this one's more full of seeds than the other one was. But... I can watch it and see where they're at now. There is the majority of everything. And now I just throw that away. And I rinse these pieces off. Or shake them off. But in reality, these seeds aren't going to hurt you any. They're not poisonous. Um, they're not toxic. They're not even hot. Just most people throw them away because of the texture of them. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape these off. But that is how you prepare a bell pepper for a julienne. Now, to actually julienne it, let me get these seeds off of my knife. What you do is you take one of the pieces that you cut, and you put it skin side down, flesh side up, however you want to word it, onto your cutting board. Because the skin is kind of the harder part, and it can make your knife jump and skip and slide, and you don't get a good enough julienne. So, here we go. Now, I obviously still need to work on my julienne skills, but I'm a scientist, not a chef. And there we have julienne bell pepper. And we're back. And there we have four julienne, mostly, bell peppers. Now, I'm going to turn on the scale. And we are at 1,748 grams. So from that, again, we're going to subtract the 1,041. For my U.S. viewers... The number of cups is 
probably going to be at least six cups. I'm not going to separate that out and measure it for you. Sorry. Sorry, I am trying to, but this thing decided it wanted to update. We've got 707 grams. All right, 707 grams of green, red, orange, and yellow bell peppers. And uh, we'll get back to you with the next vegetable. And welcome back. We've got six green onions, one vine-ripened tomato, three Roma tomatoes. I've got two cans of uh, fire-roasted tomatoes for extra flavor. And because I don't have a way to fire roast them here. And I've got two cans one small one medium the small one is a two and a quarter ounce can and the large one is a 3.8 ounce can of sliced black olives now I'm going to get all of this chopped up and then get back to you when I'm done and we're back so here's the Roma tomatoes sliced up and that was uh, we've got 230 grams or one and a half cups and then the regular tomato sliced up. Oh, I didn't finish that one for you. So here, hold on just a second. We have got um, one and a quarter cups one and a quarter. of vine ripened tomato. Mm -hmm. And let me get the mass for you here in just a moment. The mass uh, total is 1,245. 204 grams of vine ripened tomato. Um, now, all of this is about to be set aside and I'm going to move on to the next stage. Um, but uh, again, these cans here was 2.25 um, ounces or 64 grams, um, 3.8 ounces or 108 grams, and then the fire roasted tomatoes are 14.5 ounces or 411 grams. All right, <clears throat> let me get changed over and um, get the next step started for you and we're back so now we're on to the next step um, I'm using half of a package of bacon um, and I am just going to give it a nice little slicing and welcome back I've got the bacon uh, chopped up and sitting on the scale now the bacon came to 9.3 ounces or um, 264, grams. 264 grams and on to the next step and welcome back as you can see, things have changed. I've got three uh, medium to large size chicken breasts here. They are boneless and skinless. Now, um, I am going to trim the silver skin and the fat off of these. And I am going to um, cube it in half inch square pieces. And um, then I'll weigh it for you. Or actually, I'm going to weigh it for you. Um, now so that you'll know about how much chicken I'm using now once again your chickens gonna be different But I'm gonna go on ahead and weigh this for you. The first breast is 9.8 ounces or 279 grams the second breast is 445 grams or 15.7 ounces and then the third breast is 9.5 9.6 ounces or um, 271 grams and I'll get back to you when all of this is done and welcome back I've got the chicken all cut up into uh, cubes roughly um, some of them might not be cubes but some of them are so now um, we're going to start adding the Italian dressing to the chicken and mixing it around okay so I've got the chicken thoroughly coated now with the um, Italian dressing and can you get the bacon out of the fridge this is to add extra fat from uh, the bacon to increase the uh, the, the nominicity. Yes. Hashtag nominicity of the dish. Nominicity. All right. So I have got the bacon thoroughly spread through there. That is now ready to go. And, and now I'm going to be setting my uh, oven to broil at 500 degrees. Now we're going to go on ahead and slide that underneath the broiler. I am pulling the chicken and bacon out of the broiler and I am going to stir it because I need everything in here to cook evenly because I want to get a nice dark brown maybe even a little bit of char on it I want everything to stay saturated all right welcome back to Lahar and Pestis's tasty Thursday now we are ready to uh, move on to the next step. 
if you look, that is nice and browned and looks like it's pretty cooked evenly. Mm, man, I really wish you guys could smell this. Smells pretty, pretty good. Oh, yeah, uh, Lahara is standing behind the camera now, in case you were wondering where she was at. Camera operator. She has a camera operation. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be go get the next ingredient. So I'm going to get those tomatoes that we uh, chopped up earlier. And I'm going to just dump them right on in. The fresh tomatoes are added. And I'm going to open up the fire roasted tomatoes and add those. Now what I want these to do is I want these tomatoes to melt. That's literally what I want them to do. I want them to melt and become a thick sauce. The uh, nominicity of this is increasing exponentially. And uh, at this point, it goes back into the oven. Oh, ho, ho, yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, man. All right. So I'm going to give this a, a stir here. Or a mix, anyway. It probably won't be a proper stir. Now, I'm going to keep cooking this down until these tomatoes melt in here, like I said earlier. And uh, turn into just this really rich and full of flavor sauce. Um, I think at this point, I'm going to add another ingredient. Um, one carton of portobello mushrooms, baby portobello. You can see that everything is reducing down and those tomatoes are melting beautifully. The mushrooms that we added are have melted beautifully. And now it is time to start adding some of the uh, other vegetables that are here. I'm gonna start with our bell peppers. Just give these a quick little stir. And it looks like that for this one, I am going to have to add back or add some uh, of the Italian dressing back in. Those will reduce. And then the next step is going to be adding the zucchini. And welcome back. I'm going to go on ahead and uh, drop all of the squash and zucchini in there. Holders. Oh yeah, look at that. That is amazing looking. I really like the color. The colors that are in it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I do too. Mixed in. You got some writing on the side over there. I uh, see that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And. Trying to escape. That's because he knew it was coming. And welcome back. This is the final addition of the final ingredients. You'll notice on the stove, I've got a pot. It's full of uh, brined water. Um, I've put salt in it. Um, a few tablespoons of salt. And I also put a chicken bouillon cube in there to help flavor the pasta um, to match the chicken flavor in the uh, dish. And there we have it. We are done with this. Look at all of that. Look at that amazing sauce there. Mm, mm, mm. This is going to be this is going to be sinfully delicious, man. It looks like all of the onions are uh, translucent. All right, so um, I forgot about the bread. Lahar would have killed me had I forgotten about the bread. So let's go on ahead and get this started. A fresh French loaf. And I have got that. So let me get my bread knife. I'm going to put my scissors away. And I am going to try to split this as evenly down the middle as I can. It seems that I forgot to keep out a butter dish. 
So what I'm going to do is unroll this butter. And I'm going to drop it in here. Alrighty, and we're back. And I'm just going to take this compound butter and I am going to spread it generously across both halves and then when this is done I'm going to grate mozzarella cheese on it and you'll get to see that all right welcome back I uh, just went and checked the pasta and it is done and ready to go Lahar moves these on me constantly I think it's a game that she plays Aha, let's see if he can find his kitchen stuff today. I'm going to put the spaghetti back in there. I'm going to throw a little bit of olive oil in there. Probably no more than a teaspoon or two. And then I'm going to mix that around so that the pasta doesn't stick on itself. flavor the pasta with a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of green the granulated onion from earlier and a little bit more oregano and I'm going to get my ladle and I am going to ladle some of this into the pot with the spaghetti. I'm going to mix this around. Let's put the lid back on it and let the residual heat from the burner being turned off to warm all of that together and cook it all together. Alright, welcome back. This is the uh, bread. That's uh, mozzarella, the mozzarella on top of it. And uh, that looks absolutely perfect. So I'm going to get everything put together for and give you the final look. All right, welcome back. This is the completed meal. We've got our garlic bread uh, with mozzarella cheese on it. We've got our um, pasta with the uh, uh, chicken uh, mixture over there, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't have a name, as far as I know. Um, hold on. Um, Lahard, this is missing something, isn't it, still? Parmesan cheese, yes. Oh, that's right. Some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Good night. I hope you guys are eating as good as we are, but I have my doubts.